Thank you for joining us for the virtual college aspiration for all Illinois students. And this is what we want to give you a couple of housekeeping items before we get started with our presentation. So you have the Q&A button that we ask you to type all your questions in so the presenters can see it. Jacob will be able to see it at any time as soon as you put it in. Your camera and microphone are off so that Jacob cannot see or hear you. So you have to use the Q&A button. We do have more sessions like this one. So sign up for some more sessions at our website, www.iacac.org. And this recording, along with all the other ones, will be recorded and available for you at www.iacac.org. All right, Jacob, we're going to turn it over to you. Sounds good. Okay. So hello, everybody. Um, as we just said a moment ago, my name is Jacob Osterman. I am the <laughs> Illinois Freshman Admissions Counselor for the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. So just to be clear, um, the University of Minnesota, we actually have five campuses, uh, like system campuses. We are the main one. We're the main flagship campus that is located right in the Minneapolis-St. Paul Metro. So what you're looking at right now is this presentation today. It's going to take me about 30 to 35 minutes. I'm hoping to save about 10 minutes at the end for the Q&A. So please make sure you throw them in there. So we'll get to them at the end. Um, but this PowerPoint is very picture heavy. I am coming in with the assumption that none of you have been able to come to my campus. And, you know, that's okay. I recognize COVID has made it really hard for all of us. I mean, I've been in my home since uh, March as I haven't been able to come back to the office. And so this is gonna be very picture heavy to try to bring it to you as much as possible. So what you're looking at right now is actually from the second floor of our student union, our Kaufman Memorial Union, out into the mall. So for example, you know, these, the grass area with all of these educational buildings around it, also with the pillars at the end, which is the Northrop Auditorium, which is our high class uh, ballroom experience, uh, uh, performance experience. And then also what you're seeing here is actually on the left side, this is the Minneapolis skyline. I'll talk more about it, but Minneapolis, literally your backyard. I'll explain that more in depth a little bit later. So what I wanna show you first, I'm gonna make sure that my computer sound is shared, is this is a video that is actually about a minute long. It's actually prepared by our athletics department. So it is created by, to try to recruit athletes to the university. But what it's gonna to showcase to you is the really fun and exciting things that you can do in Minneapolis, literally in our backyard, as well as do some little overview shots of the university, kind of some drone shots of the university, which I'll actually use to explain a little bit as well. So make sure my computer sound is shared. I'm gonna turn down the volume just a touch because there is some hype music and enjoy. recognize it was a very short video and a lot came at us in a very short amount of time. Um, but what you saw in this video, right, was like Lake Bidet Macasco. This is actually going to the name of our native roots. Um, this, Minneapolis is nicknamed the city of lakes. There are three lakes chained together that, yeah, in the summer, absolutely, you can go and you can go stand up paddle boarding, uh, sailing, canoeing, you name it. Or maybe you want to go to the Mall of America, the largest mall in the nation with its own uh, amusement park on the inside of the mall. But at the same time, it's a mall. The mall's not your thing, that's okay. Or maybe our six professional sports teams, or maybe some of the nature nearby, like you saw with Minnehaha Falls. But one shot that I really, really enjoy in this video that really helps showcase our, our campus a little bit is that in the Twin Cities campus, we actually have kind of three parts to our campus. We have the Minneapolis East Bank campus, which is like our main central hub. That's where you know, our sports arenas are. Uh, most of our programs are gonna be. The reason it's called the East Bank campus is because it is built on the East Bank of the mighty Mississippi River, which you see here. 
Then we have, if you cross over this walking bridge or train bridge or biking bridge or however you wanna get across it, on the west side or our West Van campus, this is gonna be housed where our business school is. So our Carlson School of Management. It's actually kind of in this cluster right over here, as well as our arts programs. So when you're thinking of acting, dance, music, are all gonna be in West Bank. And then we have our St. Paul campus, which is about a 15 minute, 10 minute bus ride away. Um, the reason that we have that is that our College of Food, Agricultural and Natural Resource Sciences is housed there, and they have their own literal agricultural and cattle space to be able to work and study with. So at the University of Minnesota, we have this mantra of come curious. By that, as you know, prospective students, we are expecting you to come curious, come with that hunger of why it is that you wanna be further educated in the first place. What real world questions are you hoping to solve? Because we are a school with an immense amount of educational capability, research, real life internship experience, and study abroad experiences. And we are fully prepared to help you with an immense amount of uh, capabilities and advising as well to get you to have the skills and capabilities to be able to tackle these real world questions. But we also want you to come with that hunger to come and seize them and come take them and use them to make sure that you are really well prepared. Thinking of academics, so we offer over 150 majors, over 135 minors. And actually, when we look at graduate programs, we have over, offer over 180. So if you're thinking, you know, once you study your major, you wanna maybe do something more advanced specialized studies, absolutely, we have so many of them that you can explore in. How we organize them is across eight freshman admitting colleges. So when you apply to the University of Minnesota, you are not just applying to the university as a whole, but you're actually choosing your top two colleges of interest. So for example, let's say maybe your first choice major of interest is mechanical engineering. Your first choice college is then going to be the College of Science and Engineering. Your second choice major couldn't be chemical engineering because it's in the same college. So maybe in this case, you maybe choose mechanical engineering, first choice college of science and engineering, Second choice would be computer science in the College of Liberal Arts. Now, you are not like married to that major. You can definitely change your major later, but that just explains our admissions process a little. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna talk about each of these colleges a little bit more in depth, share a little bit of uh, information about them, especially for those of you out there that maybe don't know a lot of us and about us and kind of wanna know where to start. So we'll start with the School of Nursing. This is our newest college. It became its own direct admitting college about a year and a half ago. Unique thing here is that we actually have the longest running campus-based nursing program in the nation starting in 1909. Um, but for a very long time, you had to be in the College of Liberal Arts for a year and then transfer in. And now it's a direct admit program. Also with the School of Nursing, has some pretty good outcomes. Our graduates, they take the NCLEX exam, which is the national licensing exam that gets you to be a registered nurse. 97% of our graduates pass it the first time they take it once they're done. Great stuff. Carlson School of Management, this is our business school. So actually this picture right here, you're looking at the Carlson School of Management. Um, so when you're thinking of finance, international business, accounting, marketing, something unique about our Carlson School experience is that in recognition of our globalizing economy and our you know, digitalizing uh, economy, you are required to study abroad. Whether it be three weeks, a summer, a semester, a whole year, you are going to see another part of the world. Make sure that you are fully prepared to diversify your experience and your knowledge and get you ready to work in the globalizing market. The College of Science and Engineering, as you can imagine, has our hard sciences like chemistry, data science, computer science, uh, as well as astrophysics. And then we also have 12 different kinds of engineering. Our most popular engineering programs are biomedical, chemical, and electrical engineering. The College of Liberal Arts is our largest college. It's about 70 of our majors. So when you're thinking of our 30 different languages and dialects and cultural studies, as well as our um, sociology program, psychology program, the humanities, but then we also have economics, computer science, Bachelor of Arts, journalism, dance, musical theater. If you're someone out there who you are really undecided, you just like have no idea what you wanna study, I encourage you to start at this college because this is a college that offers you an immense amount of ability to explore and even create maybe your own independent major that fuses multiple together. The College of Food, Agricultural, and Natural Resource Sciences, or CFANS for short, in short, they're trying to save the world, preserving our earth through environmental science and fisheries and wildlife preservation, feeding our earth through agriculture and agricultural business, as well as the animals with our most popular animal science program that has veterinary tracks. 
The College of Education Human Development, as you can imagine, is early education, secondary education, special education, then also has human development. So family social sciences, human resources. Um, for those of you out there that are interested in OT, occupational therapy, or PT, physical therapy, kinesiology is here. Very popular program here is also sports management. The College of Design, our most popular program here is architecture, but then we also offer landscape design, apparel design. We have one of the top five retail merchandising programs in the nation. Something unique here is of our eight colleges, this is one of only two where you are actually applying directly into your major. Um, the reason that the design program has you apply directly into the major is that we're gonna start having you build your portfolio and critiquing immediately when you get here. Like literally your first semester, you're going to start drawing and building that portfolio and getting into critiquing at the end of your freshman year to make sure that you have a very robust and profound portfolio to show to future employers when you're all done. The other, the other college that has you declare your major right away or apply into your major is nursing because the only major is nursing. So that makes sense. And then finally, the College of Biological Sciences. What makes us unique is that we are one of few universities in the nation that has an entire college, all of the majors, are dedicated and founded in the study of life. So whether you think of biochemistry, biology, neuroscience, cell and, gen and genetic development, I would say with the College of Biological Sciences, I have found that very popular here is students who have medical, medical field aspirations, especially for like doctoral programs. Um, I will say for pre-med, you actually can be any major you want here at the university and you can still be a pre-med student. It's kind of more like taking a minor, but it is very popular for the College of Biological Sciences students. Now, we are a Big Ten school. We have 31,000 undergraduate students. However, across the entire university, regardless of major, our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. Not bad. And actually, 80% of our classes are fewer than 50 students. 64% are fewer than 30 students. For those classes that are larger than 50 students, these are typically your intro ones, right? Intro psych, intro chem, calc one for the engineering students. If you get a class that is larger than 50 students, you are guaranteed to get a discussion section or a lab section that caps off at about 30 students with a graduate student or professor that's in the same field to make sure that you get your questions answered. So you are not gonna be completely lost in the bowl of people looking at one lecture, even though we are actually moving away from that model a little bit, um, but you have the capacity to get your questions answered. Now research, we are a top 10 public research university in the country. And for us, we are Minnesota's flagship research university. So we also have a relationship with the state, yes, but also roughly 90% of all of the research done in the entire state of Minnesota goes through our system in some capacity. So there is an immense amount of research opportunities for our students to be able to get themselves involved in. How they get involved is through the Undergraduate Research Opportunities Program, or UROP for short. Through UROP, you either get connected with you know, a professor who's researching something you're interested in, or you can actually submit a proposal to get funding from the university to do your own independent project. And then you'll be partnered one-on-one -on -one with a professor for mentorship to make sure that your project goes along smoothly. And I wanna see with research, so in this picture, yes, we are seeing a student who's you know, wearing the white lab coat and playing with glassware somewhere, but I wanna say that any major on campus, even like nursing, design, you can do research because research is simply taking a question that you want to solve systematically. So please, I would highly encourage you if you come here, dive into research. It's a really great experience. Now study abroad, we have over 200 programs in over 60 countries, one of the most robust study abroad programs in the, in the nation. We take pride that regardless of major, you are able to study abroad in some capacity, whether it be three weeks, a semester, a year, again. So while yes, it is required for our business students, we take pride that you can too, regardless of what you study. And honestly, any admissions counselor, including myself, would say if you have the time and capacity to be able to study abroad, I highly, highly encourage you to do so. It's a great way to see another part of our incredible world, as well as just diversify your experience so that when you enter the workforce, you can you know, showcase those skills. Now, getting involved, we have over 900 student groups. So whether it be our more than 50 intramural sports teams, or maybe our more than 200 multicultural student groups, pre-professional groups. What I'm showcasing with this number is that if you come to campus and you end up feeling bored, 
Let's tap back into that come curious mentality. Let's tap back into that drive because I promise you, someone else on campus has similar interests to you. You just gotta get out and meet them. And also it's 2020, we have digital means to get you connected. Absolutely, it's very easy to get connected with somebody else on campus. School spirit. So with the Ra Ra Skyima, that's part of our you know, student rouser, we have over a million Gopher fans spread across the state. Honestly, you can go to any Target, you'll be able to find probably a maroon and gold stuff. We have over, we have 20 inter, Division I, not Intermail, we have 20 Division I NCAA sports teams. 12 women, eight men. Shout out to the ladies. All of our teams, all are free except for three for current students. Men's football, men's basketball, men's hockey. Those are gonna come at discounted rates. Uh, traditionally, they're coming like season passes. Um, I've seen, you know, you can do all three sports or the popular I've seen is men's hockey, men's football. But there's also single tickets. But I'm gonna tell you right now, because of the amount of spirit, especially in this state, if Iowa is in town, regardless of sport, Tickets are going to be expensive or hard to come by because everybody wants to see Iowa lose. If Wisconsin is in town, especially because it's the final football game every year, even as an alum right now, I could lose every game. We just got to beat the Badgers. It's all I'm asking for. So there's definitely some serious pride, especially when Wisconsin is in town against our Golden Gophers. Now, students have asked me, what separates Minnesota from other schools? And I would have to say, of schools that are similar size to us, similar research capability and the amount of things you can do, it is our incredible location in that it is literally in your backyard. By that, so we got this photo back down here again, it's, you know, that quad once again, the Metro Transit train, the public train, you hop, you ride four stops, 20 minutes, and you are in downtown Minneapolis, the skyline you see right here. Literally your backyard. Other big schools, we're not saying you can't get to a major city, it's just for us, right there, right? And there's some immediate benefits when we think of that. You know, on the professional side, there are 16 Fortune 500 companies based in the Twin Cities alone. 17 in the state of Minnesota. In the Twin Cities, we are second in Fortune 500 companies per capita. So number of Fortune 500s to number of people. The only one that's bigger than us is New York City. So, okay, shout out NYC. That's a really pretty good company. And these are companies like 3M, Ecolab, General Mills, United Health, Lando Lakes, Medtronic. So there's an immense amount of internship, co-op, practicum, shadowing, real life experience that you can think of that you can get involved in. I mean, heck, as a psych student myself, I had three different internships throughout my undergraduate career. And then there's the social side, right? What are you gonna do for fun? Because college is more than just sitting in a classroom. What are you gonna do in your downtime? What about the weekends? Well, again, if you hop that train, Maybe you want to go see a show. Third stop puts you right next to the Guthrie Theater, the illustrious Guthrie Theater. Maybe you want to go a couple more stops and you'll be right next to the Orpheum or the national shows like, you know, Hamilton and uh, Wicked come through. But then maybe you want to see a concert. Maybe you want to see, um, you know, at the legendary first app or maybe a more intimate feel at the Armory. Or maybe you're a sports fan like me. Six professional sports teams literally right off this train. I love being able to, you know, hop, catch a Wednesday night NBA game or uh, MLB game. But then we also have 70, 70 different languages and dialects in the Twin Cities. So we have our own cultural scene and restaurant scene as well that you can explore. Now, I've talked a long time today about, you know, the benefits of the University of Minnesota, but now I really want to make sure that you all are aware Illinois is out of state. And so I didn't want to, I want to make sure you all were aware of the cost. And what you're seeing here is actually our one-stop student services. This is our financial aid and our registrar's office. They handle everything related to those subjects. But I want to break down here is just our costs and fees. So we make sure that I'm not sliding this past you at all. So for tuition, just north of about $31,000. Room and board, this applies to everybody. Minnesota, reciprocity, out of state. This is an estimated because you can also have a few meals less a week if you'd like. I will say, as an incoming freshman, you are not required to live in the dorms. However, if you want a meal plan, you have to live in the dorms. So you either have both or you have neither. But, you know, if you have, re if you have relatives that live in the area and you want to live with them and commute or you want to try apartment living and do that, absolutely, we are not going to stop you. However, roughly 90% of our freshmen do live on campus. So it's up for you to decide. And then miscellaneous fees as well. So these numbers down here, these kind of white and gold numbers, so for the College of Science and Engineering and the College of Carlson School of Management, the business school, there's a $2,000 a year surcharge 
for their facilities to maintain their state-of-the-art facilities. So they are the $50,000 number. If you are interested in any other program outside of those two, it is the 48,000 number. Now this is before any scholarships, any need-based, any loans, any of that. For scholarships, when you apply to the University of Minnesota, you are automatically considered for merit-based scholarships across the entire university. Nothing you need to do. It's a blessing because you don't need to do anything else, but it's a curse because no one else does either. It is a competitive scholarship situation. You know, roughly 40,000 applications for 6,200 spots last year. And while we appreciate this much, you know, demand for getting to the university, it does lead to a tough scholarship situation. Now, scholarship that I want you all to be aware of is our national scholarships. This is not for Minnesota, not reciprocity, not even international, just domestic out-of-state students. They come four levels, 2,500, 5,000, 10,000, $15,000 a year. However, these are still competitive. So like as a ballpark range, that $10,000 a year scholarship typically goes to students who are in the top 10% of their high school class amongst other competitive factors. Now this is typical. You do not need to be you know, in the top 10% to get this scholarship, but this is just to kind of give you a ballpark competitiveness of these scholarships. Now, for admissions, let's, let's get to the nitty gritty. What does it take to get to the University of Minnesota? So for us, you only need to complete one app. Oh, skip the slide. There we go. You only need to complete one application. So what does that mean? Golden Gopher application or in-house application or the common application. Either is totally fine. And actually last year, I think roughly 65% of our applicants completed the, or uh, of our admitted students, excuse me, completed the common app. So it's totally fine, whichever you pick. What it considers you for is automatic, you know, freshman admission, obviously, automatic consideration for an honors program, nothing you need to do there, as well as automatic consider for, consideration for merit-based scholarships, like I just said a minute ago. Now, what does the complete application include? So filling out your application form, like you're supposed to, as well as your self-reported academic record. What does this mean? We are expecting you to, you know, download or find your unofficial transcript and put in your own classes and grades from ninth grade onwards. The reason we moved to this is that as incredible as your counselors are, we didn't want you to have to go to anybody else to be able to complete your application. We wanted you to be able to do it in your time. Do it one day if you want to. So for the sake of the application, do not, I repeat, do not send us your initial transcript. We won't take it. It has to be self-reported. Then a $55 application fee. For the fall 2021 application, Unfortunately, I can't speak to beyond that at this time. Those decisions haven't been made. But for fall 2021, we are no test required. We do not require the ACT or the SAT for our fall 2021 application. However, you can provide it if you want to, and you actually self-report that as well. If you, to, to provide it or not, I'll explain it like this in a moment with the holistic review. But what I will say, is that when you go to the application, there's going to be a question that is going to say yes to consider your test score or no to consider your test score. Once you make that pick, you are locked in on that choice. You cannot change your mind later on um, to, for your test score. So like if you choose on the application no to consider test scores, we're not gonna take it from you later on. Vice versa, if you choose yes to consider your test score, you have to get it to us at some point. Uh, in some special circumstances, if you choose yes to consider your test score and then you get your test canceled on you, please reach out to us and we will work with you to resolve that. But other than that, you are locked in on your choice. Now, how does that work for a review? So we do holistic review, which means we look at everything you provide for us. But there are, there are two overarching themes, so academic factors and context factors. The academic factors are going to be, they carry the most weight because academic preparation is key to see how you'll do in college. They include your courses and the classes you took throughout high school, the rigor of the classes you took, as well as, you know, we're thinking of the classes, like if you're interested in engineering, we like to see math classes, particularly. Your GPA, class rank, if you have it. If not, that's okay, just give us your GPA, as well as uh, your test score. Now, they're all kind of weighing together, right? If you have really good grades, don't worry about your test score, just lean on your grades. 
If you're maybe someone that has grades that are a little bit lower and have a really good test score, then maybe provide your test score so that they work together. But really, if you don't provide your test score, it just means we're putting more emphasis on the other factors, your classes and grades. That's all that means. It is not a disadvantage if you choose not to provide your test score. It's just different on how you want to present yourself. And then there's the context factors. So these are things that happen outside of the classroom, right? Leadership involvement, community involvement, uh, maybe extenuating circumstances that you want us to know. The only way we learn about these is through essays and letters of recommendation, which we do not require. We do not require letters of recommendation or essays. However, so for us, every single application, roughly 40,000 applicants, um, every single one is read by a minimum two people. When you submit your application, it is very likely that these two people don't know you, right? They've never met you before. How do you want to present yourself? Do you want to lean on your academic factors and academic capability with just your grades and classes? Absolutely, you can. Or do you want to provide more context? Do you want to share a little bit more about yourself as a student and what you've accomplished outside of the classroom? You can do that as well. We will look at everything and consider it part of your application. It's up for you to decide. Now our deadlines. So we have early action, which is November 1st, regular decision, which is January 1st. Students have asked me if I apply by early action, does that make me more admissible to you, your university? No. For the University of Minnesota, there is no difference between these two deadlines for consideration for admission, honors, or scholarships. The only benefit if you apply by early action is that you may get an admission decision sooner. You either get admit, defer, or deny. Admit and deny are pretty straightforward. If you get deferred, it just means we need to take more time with your review and we'll throw you in the regular decision pool as well. That's it. Now, School of Nursing. So for those of you out there that might be interested in applying to our nursing program, you are special. You have to apply by November 1st. This is the only program that requires it. Also, our nursing program has three supplemental questions that are about 150 words each. These are also required only of our nursing students. Everybody else, you do not need to do these things and you can wait till January 1. Now this slide. So before I talk about this grid with these numbers, I wanna talk about the high school coursework very quickly. So these are based on what it takes to graduate from, uh, from the state of Minnesota. We recognize you are not in Minnesota. That's okay. If you are otherwise admissible and you miss one of these, that's not gonna be the reason we deny you. However, our most competitive applicants meet or exceed all of these expectations. So if you can meet them, please do. With a note on this, for the three years of science, if you're interested in the College of Biological Sciences or the College of Science and Engineering, we are looking for chemistry, biology, and physics. So please make sure you get those three subjects. Now, let's look at this grid. So this is fall 2019 admitted data. Fall 2020 looks pretty much exactly the same, honestly. Uh, they just haven't quite formalized it in a nice grid like you see now. So for, for the sake of visual present presentation, I wanted to go with this one. But again, same exact numbers. But earlier I said you're choosing your top two colleges when you apply. Well, some of our colleges are more competitive than others. So you gotta be a little bit wary of which college you're applying to. For example, our college of science and engineering is our most competitive college on campus. When you're looking at you know, the middle 50% of a 30 to 34 ACT, 1380 to 1500 SAT, typically top 10% of your high school class. If you do not do high school rank, that's totally fine. Just you know, make sure you give us your GPA, weighted or unweighted, doesn't matter. Um, with a top 10% student, that is typically someone who is straight A's, right? For the College of Liberal Arts, is it, you know, another example, top 23%, that's someone who's typically all A's and B's, couple C's. Now, as we look at these numbers, I want to make this very, very clear. This is the middle 50%. This is not a cutoff at all whatsoever. Just trying to show ballpark competitiveness of our programs. If you are a little outside of these numbers, that's okay. We'll still admit you. It's just going to be a little harder to get in. So if you're well within these numbers, less stress. If you're outside of them, it's just a little harder to get in. That's all that means. When we look at um, test scores, for example, so earlier when I said the no test required, whether or not you should submit it, I would say as you look at these, you know, if your test score doesn't really fall within these middle 50%, I would advise against submitting it. You can, but 
I would say as long if it's not within these fit, middle 50%, it's not going to help you a ton. Um, in the high school rank, definitely, you know, if you maybe, if you're someone out there that maybe you're like, you know, all A's and B's, not completely straight A's, but then your, your test score is like a 31, then I encourage you to submit the test score. Again, totally find how you want to lay, kind of rely on this, just make it just how you want to submit your application for us. And now, questions. And there's me in my favorite shirt, wearing it now. Um, this is my information. So what you're seeing here is, you know, my work cell phone number, which is connected right here. So please call text. Uh, you also see my email. So please, if there's a moment for you to maybe screenshot this screen or uh, take a little snippet of that or type it in, uh, please make sure that you have my information if any questions come up. And uh, this would be a great time for questions. At this moment, I don't see any questions in the Q&A and that is okay. Um, but I think this would be the time. If there's a question I missed, please put it in the Q&A. Otherwise, if you would like to leave a little early, that's okay as well. Just make sure that you take my information with you. So we'll hang out for a couple minutes and see if there's any questions for me. Awesome, I got a question about pre-med. So for us, at the University of Minnesota, we have what's called the Pre-Health Student Resource Center. It's essentially advising. So what they do is they offer, so to be pre-med, you basically just need to meet certain prerequisite classes to be able to apply to medical school. So, you know, a biology lab class, a chemistry lab class, a couple more, a humanities class. And you can be any major and meet these classes. Now, traditionally, uh, students tend to be a biology or a chemistry student just because these prereqs are already kind of infused in the major. But for the sake of, but you could be a business student absolutely and be pre-med. It's just kind of like meeting a minor. Now, our pre health Student Resource Center is gonna have advising that's gonna help you make sure that you meet all of these prerequisites. They're gonna help you make sure that you study for your proper, maybe the MCAT or different tests that you need for dental school, um, as well as even try to help you get connected with um, maybe a little bit of mentorship or shadowing or being able to meet people in the field to be able to talk about it. So it is advising to help you make sure you get all these done Make sure you are fully prepared to take your, your, your exam to get you into medical school and help you be the best applicant you can be for your medical school experience. I have a question about our Carlson School of Management. It doesn't have an entrepreneurial program. Heck yeah, it does. We have an entrepre entrepreneurial management is literally the name of the major. Um, so yes, we have an entrepreneurial program at Carlson. Um, I have a question about the no test required. Is there a list? Um, so for us, for the entire university, so all of the colleges, um, all eight of our colleges are no test required for the fall 2021 application. I can't speak to other universities. I also can't speak to other campuses like University of Minnesota Duluth or Rochester, just because I don't, um, no, they kind of do their own, they do their own admissions at the systems campuses, but I'm, I would have to check in with them. But for the sake of University of Minnesota Twin Cities, we are no test required for any of our programs, any of our undergraduate programs. Great questions. I, uh, if there are any more, please feel free to put them in. Um, I have a question of whether or not we offer like credit or an IB program in the sense that uh, I think if you're meaning like credit for maybe an AP class or IB, absolutely we do. Um, we are also pretty transfer friendly. So I would say for, for our program, and basically if you just Google UMN AP credit as well as UMN IB credit, that'll get you connected to basically what's, you know, scores on those exams lead to what particular classes. So Absolutely, that is something we do. Um, as far as like uh, dual enrollment classes, I mean, we do have some dual enrollment opportunities that we offer through the university that's in partnership with some high schools. Um, yeah, but otherwise we basically, we're very transfer friendly when it comes to transfer credit and we will take um, dual enrollment classes very well here as well. Oh, great question. Uh, I have a question about what is my favorite part about working on campus? So 
I would say, well, I will confess right now in, in COVID, I actually haven't been able to go back to my office yet since mid-March. Um, but in my time that I have been here, I think what I've loved most about being on campus has really been just, I think it taps further into kind of being in the Twin Cities. I think for me, like I love my campus and I love that, you know, Minnesota culture is definitely a thing about Minnesota nice. I definitely have, you know, met some incredible people here at the university who have been very kind to me. But also I think for me, I just love living in the Twin Cities and I love the capacity to be able to, like I've been living here for years, I still will find a new restaurant every weekend or again, being able to catch an easy uh, professional sports team, even, you know, while yes, uh, my favorite teams are all Minnesota teams, even when Chicago's in town, I love being able to catch it, you know, an easy ticket and go see, you know, the White Sox or the Cubs in town. So um, it is just being in the Twin Cities, I can't say enough about how much I love about Minneapolis and St. Paul. I love being in these cities. Um, I got another question about me and uh, also it does not need to be a last question by all. I actually have still about nine minutes. Um, so I am a Minnesota native if, for those who are curious, but I have, you know, lived in various different cities. I've spent some time in Chicago area. I have, uh, you know, I lived in Boston and did graduate school in Boston. Um, I would say, you know, student people have asked me as someone who maybe lives in the Chicago area, especially in an urban setting like Chicago, why they would want to be to our, be in our campus. And I would say that for our campus, literally it's because we have that beautiful blend of having kind of its own separate campus feel. Like if we go back to kind of that Minneapolis East Bank River, it kind of creates a nice little separation where we have our own campus. But then if you want that urban feel, you literally hop a train and you ride 20 minutes and you're in downtown in a major city. And so we have this blend of having a major city and having its own campus right next to each other. So, you know, for our, for our you know, Chicago students who, you know, they, 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 they're used to being able to, you know, try out new restaurants every night or being able to go to various different concerts and things like that. We have that benefit, that capability because of Minneapolis and St. Paul literally in our backyard. And that's why for, for me, when students ask me like, why would I want to live in the Twin Cities versus Chicago? I say that you can have just as much fun in the Twin Cities, but also a third of the congestion and traffic. Just as much fun that you can do here, but there's just less people, it's less packed, and you still have just as much fun. I have a question about what percent of students are from Illinois? Um, so with that question, I will say roughly, so for, because we are the flagship school for the state of Minnesota, we have an agreement with our state government that roughly two thirds of each incoming class has to be Minnesota residents. So the remaining third is gonna be everybody else, right? International, reciprocity, out of state. With that in mind, Illinois is our largest out-of-state school. Shout out. Um, so like, for example, this last incoming class, about 5% were Illinois, um, which pretty good. Um, so I will say overall for the university, I don't have those numbers off the top of my head. I just am very familiar with kind of the incoming classes, um, about 5%. And that, uh, that out of state also includes, we had a lot of Wisconsin with reciprocity, um, Dakotas as well. Jacob, are you going to wait for a couple more questions or do you want to wrap up? Um, I mean, I definitely can wait about, tell you what, I'll wait about two more minutes um, if anybody throws in another question. Uh, otherwise, is there any final announcements that you have for the crew, for everybody out there today? I do have a couple of final announcements. Um, if you guys good. have a couple of questions, we can get it going or I can go ahead and share it. But usually when I wrap 
but we're done, Jacob. So okay, we want to give I them a see. couple more minutes, and I'll go right into our final housekeeping. Okay, sounds good. So for those of you out there, again, is there specific questions that you want answered or maybe specific situations that you want to talk through? You have my contact information right here. Absolutely. Um, also, this links to our admissions website. So you can definitely get information there. Absolutely. As well. Um, so I'll leave it on this one for just another minute or so. And then we'll go ahead and wrap up for tonight. Alrighty, I think it looks like no more questions today. That's okay. Uh, thank you so much again, everybody, for joining me tonight. And uh, let's go ahead and finish up with whatever other announcements we have. Oh, unfortunately, you're muted. Thanks, Jacob. I am still muted. <laughs> so, I want there to thank you guys for joining us tonight. And there will be a quick four question survey when this window closes. If you would please take the time to fill it out, we would appreciate it. Know that we'll have some more sessions to check out this week and over the next coming week at IACAC.org and all recordings for this presentation and others will be, this one will be available in about a week and then we'll have more sessions that will also be available at IACAC.org. Thanks again, Jacob, and you guys have a wonderful evening. <laughs>